This is the concept video for improper integrals. An integral can be called improper with one or any combination of the following. If your integral has an infinite upper limit, then it's called improper. If the lower limit is infinite, if it's going towards minus infinity, then, uh, then that's improper. If you have an infinite discontinuity at either your upper limit, your lower limit, or some value between your upper and lower limit, then your integral is called improper. Let's look at an example of each. Here's an integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative 2x. This integral has an infinite upper limit. So it is an improper integral. Here's an integral from minus infinity to 1 of x e to the x, an infinite lower limit. Here as it comes to the infinite discontinuities, these are harder to spot. The integrals don't have infinity as limits. So it looks deceptive. It looks just like a regular integral. But there's a problem when x equals 8. When x equals 8, your denominator is 0. So the function inside has an infinite discontinuity at the upper limit, at x equals 8. And this integral cannot be done as if it was just a regular integral. The same can happen with the lower limit. The function that we're integrating is 1 over root x. You can't divide by 0. x cannot be equal to 0. So it's subtle. We have to really look at our integrals now and make a conscious choice. Will ever the denominator equal 0? If the denominator is ever 0, on our interval, either upper, either lower, or someplace in between, then, then we have to treat the integral um, in a special kind of way. In this last example, at 0, we have an infinite discontinuity. This function will get very, very large on either the left or right-hand side of 0. But the limits of integration aren't 0. So this is the most subtle of all. If you just blindly integrate this, you'll get the problem wrong. And so the, the infinite discontinuity is between your upper and lower limit. And so this is the hardest one to spot. So how do we handle these? We handle these by subbing in a limit. You can't plug in infinity like it's a number. So when it comes time to evaluate this upper limit, you can't just take infinity and evaluate at infinity. What you can do, though, is let a variable stand for that and then let that variable approach infinity. That's what we're going to do in both the um, infinite upper limit case and then in the infinite lower limit case we'll have the, the, uh, the variable approaching minus infinity. What about these infinite discontinuities? Well, we still have a variable approaching the infinite discontinuity, but we just have to be careful about whether we're approaching from the right or the left. And so, if we have the integral from 0 to 8, then the interval, um, when we go to approach 8, if you look at the interval from 0 to 8, when we go to approach 8, will be approaching 8 from the left hand side so technically there's a minus there it usually doesn't play a role in the integration but it but it could so we have to be technical about it and say we're approaching 8 from the from the left hand side and then we're approaching 0 from the right hand side on this on this uh, on this other integral here we're going from we're going from 0 to 9 but 0 is the issue so we let z we, we let t approach 0 but it'll be approaching from the right hand side and then finally, when we have an infinite discontinuity in between, that's the most difficult at all because we have to um, find out where that discontinuity is and break it into two separate integrals where we go from negative from our lower limit to the infinite discontinuity and then we add to that from the infinite discontinuity to our upper limit and we have to put in variables there to approach that infinite discontinuity. So that's the most difficult. But, um, but in class, we'll take a look at all of these and, and we'll actually solve every single one of these examples and more. Okay, the key is this though. If the limit exists, then we say that the integral converges. Now, if the limit fails to exist, there's two ways that could happen. It could just, you know, doesn't it could it, it could actually be a limit that, that doesn't agree left and right hand side, or it could be an infinite limit, either either plus or minus infinity. If the limit fails to exist, we say that the integral diverges. So the question is going to be, does the integral converge or diverge? And in 
certain cases, if it converges, we'll be able to find out what the integral converges to. Okay, but here's the problem though. There's this limit that becomes a part of this problem. All of a sudden, the integral question becomes a limit question. And so the issue at hand then is that the skill for evaluating improper integrals relies on your skill of integration and your skill of evaluating limits. So we've gone over a bunch of integration techniques. These are most, um, you know, most ready and available for us in our memory. But but how about evaluating limits? That was back in calculus first semester. And so let's take a just a quick, quick look at the the um, the things you would need from first semester calculus to help you evaluate these limits. Um, in our textbook, it was called section 2.6. But um, evaluating limits at infinity will be a necessary skill. If you have a rational number r greater than 0 and you try to take 1 over x to the r as x gets really large as x goes to infinity then that's going to go to 0 if you have a, a rational number as long as the um, as long as you you have your function that's in the denominator defined um, then when you try to go towards minus infinity it's going to go to 0 And then we also um, saw that if you have a, a rational function that you're integrating, a numerator and denominator both being polynomials, then you can look at the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. If they're equal to each other, then you can say that the limit will be the leading coefficient, the coefficient of the leading term in the numerator divided by the coefficient of the leading term in the denominator. If you have a rational function where the denominator degree is is more than a numerator degree, or read backwards, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then this is immediately going to tell you that the value of the limit is zero. The denominator is growing much faster than the numerator because it has a higher power for the polynomial. And then finally, if you have the other way around where your numerator degree is more, then you're, you can confidently say that the limit doesn't exist and the reason being it's going to be plus or minus infinity infinity based on a, um, a few factors that you wouldn't have to worry about but at that point you just say the limit doesn't exist and you move on for it for improper integral sake so so that's how you deal with the limits at infinity but also we need to um, rely a little more heavily though on uh, L'Hopital's rule if you have this um, it doesn't have to be a rational function, just a, um, a function f and a function g, f divided by g, and they both go to zero, then that's called an indeterminate form. It's zero over zero. Could be zero, could be one, could be infinity, could be three. And so we, we have to deal with that. If we have a, um, the same thing happening, but then they're both going to plus or minus infinity as x goes to a, then we have this plus or minus infinity over infinity. We can't treat infinity like a number. We put quotations around it. This isn't, a, this isn't a number. It's called an indeterminate form. And the way we deal with it is to employ L'Hopital's rule. It just says the following. Trade your limit in for the limit of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator, provided that that limit exists. OK, so L'Hopital's rule and then the uh, limits at infinity will help you when you're trying to figure out improper limits. We'll look at a bunch of examples in class. This is just uh, the background um, that you need to, uh, to follow what's going to happen in class.